Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco going to preview for you another set of reels that have come in this week. Some of the projects I will be working on and uh, those that, well, hopefully we'll turn them into videos if uh, they're not in my library. And if uh, there's any here that you would like to see, please uh, let me know by way of a, a request in the comment section. I'll be happy to do that for you. So let's take a look. The first one comes in from Ralph. Uh, Ralph is in Ohio. And he said he finally got some uh, line on a bait caster that was serviced and as he was putting it on it was losing its tension. So we're going to have to go see what's going on with this one. But uh, for sure we're going to take a look at that and uh, get that one back to Ralph. So uh, we did a video on one of those and it did uh, seem to get a lot of good responses to it. If you have a uh, bait runner I would encourage you to go look in my... Uh, my library to see those. That uh, bait runner is one of those that um, is very popular. Probably one of the best ones around. Okay, well next one comes in from Amy down in Florida. And uh, she had told me she had purchased a, uh, a reel from the fall at a garage sale. And um, wanted to know if I couldn't clean it up for her. Let's see if this is the reel. Well, this is a different reel, but that's okay. So we were just talking about the bait runners. This one I haven't done. This is the modern version of that uh, one that you just saw. It's a uh, Shimano 6000D. And uh, I know I haven't done this one. Turbo Propulsion 6000D Shimano. And uh, Amy was showing me some pictures that uh, she's been landing of her catches on the uh, shores of uh, Atlanta, uh, the Atlantic coast of Florida. Some really beautiful uh, fish. And we'll get that one out there so she can go catch some more. And then I think this one is probably the one that we initially discussed. This was her yard sale find. It's a beauty. And uh, this is the pen. It's the 710. Uh, complete with badging and everything. Very nice condition. That bail is running low. It looks like it's probably been been poorly bent down, but other than that, we're going to we'll see if we can't straighten that bail for her, and we'll see what we can do to uh, to clean this all up, and let her take that one fishing as well. So we have a bait runner 6000D, which I know is not in the library. We have a 6500, which I do know is in the library, and now we have a 710, and I also know that one is in the library as well. To do that, just simply put in Second Chance Tackle. You can see all of my uh, um, videos that I posted. I'm over a thousand now. Probably will also find some uh, that you own, and you can use those for servicing. All right, the next one comes in from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And this is a Pen 9. So there's two versions out there. Of this reel, I frequently get questions. Well, this isn't the Pen 9, it's the Pen 9 box. But I get questions on the Pen 9 versus the Pen 109. Folks that uh, buy the Pen 9 realize that it's kind of a miniature 209 or a 309. And uh, folks that buy the 109, well, the first question I usually have is why is the handle turning backwards? Well, that's by design. This has nothing to do with it being broken. And uh, we. Uh, Hope that uh, you can avoid sending those reels in for repair, simply because the uh, uh, the reel doesn't do what you think it should do. We have a missing screw here. So there's a bridge plate underneath here. There's actually two bridge plates under here. There's uh, These two will hold the uh, top end of the assembly. These two will hold the bridge plate. And one of those bridge plate screws is missing. So we sent it in to me. He asked me if I couldn't replace that screw and also uh, tune that wheel up. So uh, we're going to take care of that for him. It's uh, Howard in Philadelphia. We'll make sure that that uh, gets out there to go fishing again. really like those reels. This one is the uh, 900 series. It's the uh, 9, I believe it's the 981. Very uh, well-built reel that will last a long time. So if you want to see these reels and other reels uh, repaired, or if you want to uh, just uh, kind of see and learn a lot about fishing reels, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And uh, when you do subscribe, hit that notification button. That way you will see the uh, reels I'm working on. 
and you'll get an idea of whether those are reels that you want to uh, fish with. Okay, this one comes in from Matt in Alabama, so we're getting around today. We've been in uh, Florida, Alabama, Philadelphia, and uh, we've got uh, a couple of these here. Let's see what we got. So I think the first one, if I remember my conversations with Matt, and I may be a little bit out of it, I think he bought a, a reel that may or may not be working well. So we had just done one of these. This is the Okuma. I don't think we did this particular model. It's a left-hand drive early Okuma bait caster. It's a very nice reel, and uh, I think we'll do this one. I'm going to go check, make sure uh, that I don't have it in my library. I love those these reels. They're right up there with that Shimano Phantom reel of the time that also had that metal uh, case, aluminum case. Beautiful reels. All right, here's one called. Uh, Wave spin. I don't know the manufacturer, but uh, hopefully it doesn't need parts. So I'm thinking this is probably one of these. Um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm thinking. Generic reels. This is Doug Hansen. Wave spin by Doug Hansen. Don't know the reel. I'm going to have to do a little bit more. It's obvious that there's a lot of dirt buildup inside here. Uh, this reel's been around for a while, hasn't been cleaned, but uh, we'll make sure that we can uh, do just that for us. See if we can't uh, learn a little bit about that reel and uh, get that one back to uh, Matt to go fishing with. I'll have to go back to my notes on that one. I don't recall if there was any issue with that. And again, I, when I see a reel like that, the first thing I generally think about is that there's going to be limited parts available. Okay, well, here comes another bait. Uh, Bait caster. This one's hard for me to, to see whose it is. Okay, kind of has that old feel. Oh, it's quantum. Okay, it's a quantum reel, the EX501CX, and uh, this one seems to be running okay. This, we're in free spool, but I'll assume that the drag is off on that. If I have the time, I'll do a video on that one. Those are old school bait casters from the, from the 80s and the early 90s. And we got one more in here. And that looks to be the uh, the twin of that one in a little bit better condition, the EX501CX. Yeah, so we'll do one of these for Matt just to make sure that he gets to see those as well. If you have any questions on fishing reels, uh, it doesn't have to be on any of these that are shown here. Please leave them in the comment section. I will try to respond to you you and get you uh, the answers you may need. Well, those of you that watch my channel probably realize who sent this one in. This is another box that is coming from Scott. I think uh, this is Scott's attempt to keep me employed. I'm not quite sure. Uh, always fun to see the reels that he's got at the flea markets and uh, see what I can do and what kind of finds he's had and which ones will make videos for us. So he's actually uh, done me a favor here in that, well, I get the subjects for my videos without spending a lot of time at the flea markets. Unfortunately, I like spending a lot of time at flea markets looking for stuff, but uh, I'm living vicariously through Scott at the moment. So we have a small uh, Daiwa. It's a 7270A. This is a um, an introductory level reel. It doesn't have anything fancy with the bail. It just has a simple, uh, what I'll call a bang bail. When it comes around here, you'll see it's going to hit on that handle there. And that's going to trip the bale back. It's uh, a Japanese made reel. Uh, this one is, I'm sorry, it was made in Korea. It's in pretty nice condition. Very simple inside. We'll take that apart. We'll show you how that one's done. It looks like we got the bigger brother of that one too. We have the 7290A. I'm going to have to go back and see if I've done that one. This one just seems like it needs, uh, needs to have all some old greases and the light cleaned up out of that one and uh, get serviced. They're, they're relatively easy to service. And that's why I do some of these videos, to show you that you can do it yourself. And uh, if I can help you along the way, if you get stuck, well, again, leave that in the comments section. I'll be happy to help. The old Mitchell 306. Love this reel. So this is a, uh, a little bit smaller than the 302. That actually gives it some more flexibility in how you can use this reel. 302 is generally thought of as a bigger game reel. It's also thought of as a surf reel. This one can go surf, it can go boat, you can go laking, uh, lake fishing with it. And 
kind of what have I expected here. It's the same thing as what's going on with that Daiwa. Just a lot of old grease that uh, needs to uh, uh, get cleaned up, cleaned out, and it'll go fishing again. Here's your Penn Delmar. Penn Delmar is the 285. One step up from the Seaboy 85. One step down from the Penn Long Beach 60. Almost all of the parts in those three reels are interchangeable. There's the posts, the uh, handles, the um, spools, side plates, little bits of variation. So on the Delmar versus the Pen 85, it's a handle change. In this case, Scott told me we have a pretty loose handle knob. There's no way to correct that. The handle needs to be replaced. On the Delmar from the 85, the chroming was better on the metal pieces. Uh, but these uh, these have gotten pretty well brassed anyway, and uh, from the moving from the Delmar to the Pen 60, the Pen 60 had inside trim rings going on there, and uh, that was primarily the biggest difference from previous. Well, he's given me an 85 while well, I was just talking about that, so here comes your comparatives now. This 85 comes in a box, which is getting harder and harder to find. You can see the difference in the handle, and. Um, other than that, this one is, you can see the difference on the uh, crossbars I was explaining. They lose their chrome much quicker. Uh, just a, a lighter case of chrome. And this one's got something getting stuck in there. So I've uh, done an awful lot of pens uh, to the point, I think, where some folks have written me comments asking me if I only do pen reels. Well, I only do the reels that I uh, have customers send in. And in this case, uh, most of them are pens because we're on the Atlantic. Uh, seaboard and pen is a, a reel of choice. Well, here's a, uh, a Shakespeare. It's the 2065 Spin Wonder. It's, uh, you can see it in here. I'm not going to remove the whole thing yet. It's um, a reel I know I have not done. So we're going to go take a shot at this one and uh, we'll, we'll bring that one to you. Actually, I want to take this out to see where it was made. It was made in the USA. There you go. The only reason I was kind of questioning that was a look at this one Kind of has the look of the Italian real casing design, but I know I haven't done this one. Whoa, it's not turning. Remember what I said, if the reel isn't turning, don't try to leverage it by the gear. Try to turn it by the, the rotor. And this is just going to be a case of a, a grease choked reel. And uh, if that's the case, well, that one will uh, go back fishing again. I hope so. He's got all the pieces and parts in here. He's got an extra spool. He's got two extra spools. He's got the original box and kind of fair condition, but uh, overall, hopefully we're going to make those work. So that's the preview. If you've seen any of these that I've been doing that you would like me to do uh, that I mentioned uh, maybe I wasn't going to do, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to try and get a video for you uh, if I can. Uh, this is a good time of year. Uh, we're in the uh, late spring now. Folks are starting to go fishing, so I only see the reels now from my local trade when reels tend to break. I think the guys that wanted to get out on the boats have already brought the reels in that needed the servicing. I get, I think uh, for opening day is certainly well past. So if your gear wasn't working on opening day, it, I've seen that in already. And that's, uh, it's always good when I get those kinds of days because, well, if the shop gets a little slow, I get more time fishing. So there you go. There's a good trade-off to that. So if you're a first responder, essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you've been doing to help us uh, stay safe and well during the pandemic and to restore the health to those that have suffered from COVID. To all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.